folks, Dave here, and as you guys just saw there in the intro, it's finally time to look at a build here at the Nuka World Red Rocket. A few weeks ago, I used a couple of mods to officially liberate Nuka World in the name of the Minutemen. I freed all of the slaves, restored power to the park, and now we can finally start building at Red Rocket. I got to thinking, what would Nuka World look like after all of the raiders were wiped out? And I think that this open area, this main part of the park, without all those huge gangs to help control it, would be pretty dangerous. There would definitely be different parts of those raider gangs still wandering about that would just be really, really dangerous for those former slaves that are trying to live here. So over at Red Rocket, I've been building a Nuka World Refugee Center for all of the former slaves to help them adjust to their new freedom, and of course, in true General Day fashion, prepare them for becoming valued members of Minutemen society. Again, I just think that the main part of the park here, even with Minutemen troops on station, is going to be hard to secure for a while. So let's head over to Red Rocket and take a look at the Refugee Center. I'm going to consider this part of the Red Rocket build as stage one. This is pretty complete, but there's a huge amount of build area here. Thanks to mods, this entire farmland next to the refugee camp is all buildable as well. So I think it's going to be fun to maybe revisit this Red Rocket settlement in the future and add on to it as if time had actually passed. So for now, as you guys can see, we have a very junky, almost junkyard themed refugee camp. Again, to help those former slaves adjust to their new reality here in Nuka World. The walls are going to be made up of a number of different parts of the nearby automobile scrap, as well as some pikes, lots of barbed wire, and just obstacles to help secure the perimeter. This guy is here checking off yes. the refugees that they're expecting, and definitely watching out for any raiders trying to get into the mix here. That would be a bit of a disaster if some of them got inside of the camp. Inside, as you guys can see on the right, we've got a pretty good sized area, uh, farmland. That's going to help the community here become self-sustaining, so they won't be so dependent on convoys from Minutemen territory. Also got one of our iBot scouting drones here, which we're using to scout out locations like Red Rocket right here, where we can build at. I imagine that some of this stuff, some of these shacks and uh, shelters would have been partially built before the raiders actually arrived in Nuka World and took over, and the Minutemen are just going to repurpose them and build onto them. Plenty of security here at the front gate with a couple of rebuilt Protectrons. Protect and serve. Yes. And a Minuteman trooper ready to help protect the refugees. There's even a bit of a wall jump you can do here. Climb up the plywood. Get up into the bit of the tower right there. Supported partially by a basketball hoop. So you can see what's going on outside in case there's an attack. Speaking of which, let's close that gate back up. And the bar slams down and secures it. This wall is from a junk wall mod, all of these different automobile walls, and then I've added small bits of detailing, extra car pieces, extra bits of plywood, a few sandbags, just to make it my own, if you will, and add that extra level of detail. <laughs> and of course, it's not a Minutemen settlement without some propaganda, including this giant welcome banner, a reminder that the general is restoring hope. You could definitely describe this settlement as scrappy because it's really far at the end of the Minutemen supply line. I'll have to show you guys this settlement at night though before we're finished because it does have huh? some pretty cool lights set up to get the attention of some of the former slaves out here in Nuka World. And of course you've got the Minutemen flag up there mounted to an antenna on the giant Nuka Cola. Yes. If we head past our cold storage container here, where food and alcohol and, of course, Nuka-Cola is kept, got it hooked back up to the power, 
you can see that I've kind of used this old entrance to the gas station as a guide for the main street of our junky town. I saw a death call once. It was far away, but I saw it. You've got a bunch of mute fruit trees going down the side of the boulevard here. Lantern to light your way at night. And again, a lot Just of those so walls know, made up of I'm junky cars. These walls are already pretty fantastically junky on their own, but if you add a few bits of scrap from other mod sets, you can really get a cool amount of detail. And built into the wall is a small alcove for, well, taking baths, it's pretty obvious, right? Some hanging sheets for a minor amount of privacy, but you're going to have to pump and bucket that water yourself. This is definitely not a uh, full Commonwealth settlement where General Dave would have fancy running water for his citizens, but hey, at yes. least they've got a solid supply of uh, fresh beer on tap, and some supplies probably off of a Brahmin convoy from the Commonwealth itself and other Minutemen settlements. But yeah, the overall yeah. living quarters are pretty scrappy. This probably would have been a partially built location, maybe a few shacks here and there before the raiders arrived and took over. And now the Minutemen have finished it out, fleshed it out, and added those outer walls to help secure it. It's kind of awesome how you can see the Nuka World castles there in the background. This shack's got some very basic beds. Someone's got a box full of melee weapons there. Stove for some heat and for cooking, and just a few personal possessions, including a fantastic Nuka-Cola chair. As we turn back to Main huh? Street here, if you will, huh? you can see lots of supplies stored up. Again, those convoys probably coming several times a week right now to help keep things well stocked here in Nuka World. We do have a responsibility to these people now that we've saved them from the raiders to, well, try and keep them alive, right? This guy's got his stew pot going. This guy's on guard with his, yes. uh, huh? really crappy pipe pistol. But hey, it's better than nothing. This shack's got a bunch of sleeping quarters crammed in. That's a theme you guys are going to see pretty often here. You've got to make use of the space that you have available. But at least they have a spot for their personal possessions and clean clothes. And, well, most of a roof over their head. This guy's got comic tucked under his pillow. Yes. That brings us over here to Red Rocket itself. This was inspired directly by my original Red Rocket build, the one over next to Sanctuary, which I had to tear down when I rebuilt Sanctuary because it was just too close and the frame rate was terrible. I loved building inside of this building, using it as almost like a uh, fortified area. But this time around, I wanted to keep the original workshop theme. So I have reused a lot of the decorations that were already in here, and added a few of my own, as well as overhauling the lighting with these really awesome looking shadow casting lights. It really adds a sharpness to the, uh, the textures and the detailing here. Yeah. Got a stack of weapons that someone's working on, along with a manual for them. Got to have that Minutemen huh? flag. I love, again, how detailed that texture is. And a map of the Commonwealth, along with a bunch of cleaning and other supplies yeah. there on the back shelf. This guy looks like he's taking a bit of a break. Working on those Protectrons. Get a few more up and running to help protect the refugees, probably. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, please remain calm if you are injured. Not sure what those stubby arms can actually accomplish, but hey, we'll take all the help we can get out here. As I imagine that a lot of these former slaves aren't in great health. Protect and serve. Oh, huh? easy, um. pal. I went to Nuka World, and all I got was this stupid poster. Is he walking backwards? I don't know what he's doing. 
This guy is just trying to sweep all the dirt into the corner. There was a Mosin Nagant on the back shelf here. Someone appears to have picked it up and gone on patrol, but still got a few other weapons lying around, like the laser pistol, ready to help defend yeah. the settlement. Inside, we've got a bunch of food storage here. Again, I really love making use of these interior spaces using what's already here and just expanding on it. So you've got some new food storage in this corner. All of the windows here of the former gas station have been not only boarded up, but boarded up and fortified with multiple layers of reinforcement right there to help protect them from outside attacks. Overall, I would say that the inside of the building here is quite secure. Got a dining area yes. where our settlers and refugees can come together, listen to the radio, and have a meal. And then a random mix of extra food and medical supplies for the dining room shelf. Got your cooking area with the wood-fired stove and the pots and pans. And you can definitely tell that you're in Nuka World yeah. with our bottle cap, chair, and table here. Yes. Yes. Now generally, I always have a Minutemen statue somewhere in the settlement. In this case, I couldn't really see that the Minutemen would have brought a full-size statue from the Commonwealth just yet when this refugee camp is still getting started out, so instead someone's brought their Minutemen souvenir figurine, which fulfills the role of that statue easter egg for the settlement. It actually looks pretty awesome shrunken down like that. Someone over here has got a pretty complete collection of Nuka World swag right there. The former gas station waiting room has been moved out here to the open area and set back up. Again, pretty messy, but some comfort for the refugees, where they can also be acclimated to the Minutemen life thanks to the classic holotape, Ranger Dave's Survival Tips. Which is basically the only thing playing right now, so hope they're ready to learn some survival tips. For the bathroom, I imagine this as, well, the bathroom from before the war, with a couple of tweaks. I wanted to figure out a way to make it look like we had gotten partial running water back once again. So I used my water pipes mod, and I've got this pipe dumping right into the tank there. Kind of a jury rig style toilet, and I think that looks pretty nifty. In the former waiting area, we now have a much more secure area for people who are really, really injured. You've got some medical supplies on hand, and hopefully that medical protectron knows what it's doing and can get you patched up pretty quickly. It's a combination of secluding people who might be really, really sick away from everyone else, and also giving them some peace and quiet so they can recover and have all the medical attention that they might need, always while the general reminds them that he is fighting for a better future. You definitely won't be at this camp without realizing who has provided it for you. Yeah. Yes. We can head out one of our secure doors right here once again, and you guys can see some of the security guards watching the outside of the fence, and some of the first arrivals of some defensive turrets to help put up some of those initial defenses and protect this refugee camp. Even got some uh, wire here underneath the shacks so that no one can crawl underneath and sneak in. And some lanterns all the way around the perimeter to help light things up at night. Lots of junky cars out here, some of which were used to build that wall. That's a pretty cool angle right there, looking back towards that castle. And this one right here is probably going to be used for an addition onto the wall once everything gets moved over and the settlement continues to grow. Speaking of continuing to grow the settlement, you can see some of the tarps and tents right here, perhaps from people who were hiding out from the raiders who were controlling Nuka World. 
This outer area right here is one area where I want to expand on in future parts of the build here at Red Rocket. Lots of cool space underneath there that I think we can do some fun stuff with. But here, with this version of the settlement, I'm just imagining it maybe, let's say, four weeks after the liberation of Nuka World. Things are just starting to get rebuilt and put back together. As part of that, and to help make room for more refugees from Nuka World proper, this wrecked school bus that was stuck here at the gas station has been converted into additional quarters. Very simple, just mattresses, and it's a little dirty and grimy, but we've got all of the windows here sealed up for protection, and even your own stash of supplies for people who are staying in this outer, less secure part of the settlement. I think the school bus just works well as a self-contained survival shelter, which is really more of a overflow shelter in our case for the refugee center. And it definitely gives that idea of this is expanding and being built so fast that we've got to use all the space available while trying to keep people safe. <laughs> and a reminder, without the general and the Minutemen, all is lost. That opens right into the main part of the building. So, of course, that door would be secured basically all the time. Around back here, you guys can get an overview of the walls that are protecting the garden, as well as the rooftop access, which is going to be pretty important. Just do a quick jog around here. You've got a defensive sandbag bunker here, complete with some wire mesh so that People can fire out at any attackers, and again, a couple of lanterns to help light things up around that perimeter wall. Even where we're using the broken down, rusted out cars, we've got additional pikes if the wall is too short, just to keep people from climbing over too easily. Tell you what guys, let's take a quick look at how this settlement looked before, and then we'll take a look at things at night as we tour the last bit of the inside. And I'm going to scrap everything so that you guys can see the blank settlement. But again, I have reused some of Bethesda's decorations, like the inside of the workshop. So I didn't quite start with this blank of a template. But that's how things look when they're completely empty. Oh boy, does my frame rate like that. And we're back, and you guys can see some of the spotlights that are also going at all times to help protect the exterior of Red Rocket. Let's put my rifle away there, and we'll look at things here in the survival garden at the settlement. We're going to go in the back door, ignoring the do not enter sign. This is where one of the fusion reactors was kept before the war complete with the concrete bollards to help protect it. As you guys can see, the Minutemen have fired it back up, and it's operational once again. Those spotlights look pretty awesome. The garden here is pretty huge. Got some extra water pumps in the back. Dumpster built right into the wall for carrying the trash out. A doghouse, although there's no dog at this settlement just yet. There's the inside of our defensive bunker, looking back towards the park itself. An extra outhouse for overflow use, some extra water supplies for the garden itself. And going past all of our corn fields here, and the rest of our crops, including a shopping basket for gathering them up, got just a outdoor work area where we're working on those defensive uh, wall pieces, some beams, some extra boards. Just a nice open work area with some protection from the sun and a cold beer. Now we're back in the main part of the settlement. We're going to go back around to the back here because you guys might have noticed that there was a staircase. Surprise, surprise, that's how you get up onto the roof. There's an additional backup generator up here, 
which the Minutemen have also restored. That one's not high power. Again, it's just a backup generator, but it is helping to power our recruitment beacon as well as some of the lights here on the roof. And we do have some defensive canvases to block line of sight and some turrets mounted on girders right here on the rooftop. Some sandbags here and there. Just a couple of locations to help defend the settlement from attack. And I will say that there are some very nice sight lines from this rooftop. You can see for really far, well, when it's not dark, right? <laughs> There's a smoke exhaust for the stove in the kitchen. Just knocked it right through the rooftop there. We even have a couple of solar panels to help supplement the power with all these lights and turrets that are having to go uh, pretty constantly. I've even got this turret here leaned back on its side to, to help light up the Nuka-Cola bottle and attract refugees to this location. Although I think it would probably attract any surviving raiders as well. We also had a guard up here on the rooftop during the day, but he appears to have gone down for the night. We still have our rocket turret keeping an eye on things out here in the wasteland though. So guys, that is my version 1.0 of the Minutemen refugee camp here at Red Rocket, Nuka World. Just hop down. Also got, as you guys can see, a red spotlight hooked up aimed at the Red Rocket logo. Yeah. Gives it some nice atmosphere. Again, trying to get the attention of refugees who might be wandering out in the wasteland. So like I said, guys, I still have a ton of space. I'm going to go into free cam here. All of this farmland out here is usable space at this settlement. And of course, you've got the area underneath the carport as well. So what else could be added here at the Nuka World refugee camp in the future? What would this settlement look like in, say, six months or a year? I definitely want to come back and add more. I just think that this refugee camp fits really well into my Minutemen lore as General Dave and his Minutemen take over not just the Commonwealth, but now Nuka World as well. Who knows where we're going to take over next. For now, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching and don't forget to watch out for my Gamescom coverage coming up starting next week. I'll see you guys then.